Kumusta and welcome to Bisaya 24-7, your official Cebuano English tutorial on the web. Um, it's been a while since I have updated this page, but today I'm so excited to teach you another uh, topic um, in order for you to have a better understanding of the Cebuano or Visayan dialect. Um, if you find this page useful, please support the page by clicking on the link and uh, subscribing. Also, if you are interested in learning more, about the Cebuano or Visayan dialect. Uh, please know that we have books that are available on Kindle and in paperback. You can get it from Amazon. Um, we have two books right now. The first one is BizDAC, Learn to Speak Cebuano Overnight. And for a more in-depth Cebuano learning, you can also get the second book which is entitled Gamhanan English to Cebuano Translation 101. So are we ready? Because um, it's time for us to learn more of the Cebuano and Visayan dialect. So for this lesson number four, we are going to learn about counting and numbers and also we are going to cover um, references to time. So uh, before we dwell into the translation of the numbers, I would like to let you know that um, there are two conventions that are used when um, translating the numbers. So the first one is obviously an influence of the Spanish colonization, and thus the translation is more uh, Spanish sounding. So if, say for example, you say one, that's uno, two is dos, three is tres, four is cuatro, five is cinco, six seis, Seven, siete, eight, ocho, nine, nueve, ten, diez. And if you want to go further, you can always just say, okay, eleven is once, twelve, doce, thirteen, trece, fourteen, catorce. 15, 15, 16, this is size, 17, this is 7, 18, this is 8, 19, this is 9, 20, 20, or 20, but um, most locals would say 20, 20 is um, 20. So, for example, if somebody would say, how much money do you have? And you have, say, a $10 bill, you can always just say, oh, I have this. And um, the local currency is in pesos. So you can always just say, oh, I have this pesos. Or... I have um, ocho, or I have nueve. So you can always um, express it in the Spanish sounding translation, and um, people can understand the, the number convention. Um, however, there's also another basic translation of um, counting and numbers, and that is in the pure uh, Visayan version, which is um, totally different. But nevertheless, it is also still understood by most anyone. So when you say one, usa, 
तो दुहा थ्री थुल्लो फोर उपात फाइव लिम्मा सिक्स उन्नोम सेवन पितो एट वल्लो नाइन सियाम टेन नपोलो um so what happens uh when you want to express 11 what happens after 10 how do you say 11 now 11 would be 10 and 1 literally so you say it by also expressing it in the literal translation which would be 10 and 1 or napulo og usa og is the translation for the word and so that would be napulo og usa for 11 how about for 12 for 12 we would say that's 10 and 2 so that would be napulo og duha what about for 13 napulo og Tulo, nineteen, napolo og siam. Now what happens when you get to the twenty part? Now there is um, a different um, convention assigned to those um, ten number counts. So that would be napolo is for ten. Twenty would be Kauhaan. Um, Thirty is Katluan. Forty uh, is Kapatan, and so on. So, um, as you can see, the pure Visayan translation is a little longer to translate, and so um, you'll seldom uh, hear people. Using this kind of translation once it comes to the bigger numbers, so more or less they did use the uh, Spanish translation in these cases. Now let's have a few examples. Um, numbers in Spanish are often used for time references so if i say time reference in the morning you know let's have a few examples for example if i say ala una sabuntag that would mean one in the morning so the ala una part that represents one so that's purely spanish um sabuntag so buntag is morning ala una sabuntag one in the morning ala shet is a gabi that would translate to seven in the evening ala cuatro sa hapon that would be four in the afternoon alas dosi sa udto that would be 12 at noon um before uh going further into the numbers let's have um time references so when you say buntag that's morning udto noon hapon afternoon gabi evening tungang gabi midnight karon now unya later ugma tomorrow karong adlawa today sunod semana next week karong semanaha 
or sometimes you can also say karong semanahuna this week so this will help you to navigate any uh, time reference with respect to the Cebuano and the Visayan translation. So now let's have an example and we will try to translate the phrase. Ugma sa alas ocho sa gabi. What would this phrase translate to in English? Ugma tomorrow sa by alas ocho at the strike of eight sa at gabi night or evening so um take note that sa here can be um, used to reference a point so you can either say sa by or sa at um the translation for this phrase would be tomorrow at eight at night or you can also say it this way tomorrow at eight in the evening um, either translation is correct for this given um, example so let's have a few more examples with um, expressing it in time or with reference to time um, these are just random examples some of them are questions some of them are answers so let's have unsa nga oras ta magabot um, unsa what nga oras specific time ta is the concatenation for kita or we or us magabot that is going to meet or to meet so that would be what time are we going to meet um sasunod nga adlaw the following day unsang oras ata magabot ugma um that translates to what time are we going to meet tomorrow so this phrase is similar to the first one the only difference is there's an added word ugma which means tomorrow but uh, you can always say it as unsa nga oras ta magabot ugma and it will still be translated to what time are we going to meet tomorrow sasunod nga buwan the following month kanus a ka moli if you remember kanus a means when so ka is just a shortened form of ikaw which means you and muuli uli is come home so to come home therefore the complete translation would be when are you coming home unyang hapon unya is later unyang is unya nga so that's later um hapon afternoon that's unyang hapon is later in the afternoon kanus aka mugikan this is similar to the previous question but it uses um, a different uh, verb so when are you leaving that would be the translation for kanus aka mugikan when are you leaving ini ka alas sa hapon sa lunes um inig ka 
translates to by or it specifies a point in time. So, inig cinco by five, sa hapon, that's in the afternoon, lunes, lunes um, means Monday. So, the complete translation would be by 5 p.m. in the afternoon on Monday. Kanus aka mubalik. Again, this is a similar question. Um, the only thing that's changed is the verb. So this translates to, when are you going to return? When are you going to come back? Inig ka taod taod. Um, inig ka, again, it references a point in time. And uh, taod taod is a Visayan word which means in a little bit or later or in a few or in a sec. So when you say inig ka taod taod, that simply translates to in a bit or in a short while. Karon na ba? Um, na is usually used in conjunction with time. So when you say karon na ba, you are simply asking for a confirmation. And karon means now. So karon na ba simply translates to is it now? Unya na ba? This is a simple variation of the previous question, but instead of saying now, we use um, unya, which translates to later. So this question, unya na ba, is translated as, is it going to be later? Inig ka human. Human is finished. So, inig ka, when or by. So, when it's finished, when it's done. Inig ka human, when it's finished. Inig ka human nako. Um, this is similar to the previous statement. The only difference is the added word nako, which is a possessive form of the word ako, which means me. So that would translate to, by the time I'm done or by the time I'm finished. Inig kahuman nako. Inig kahuman nako og kaon. Again, this is similar to the previous statement, but we've managed to add another word or two words, og kaon, which uh, points to a verb or an event. So this translates to when I finish, kaon is eat. So this is when I finish eating. Inig kahuman na ko og kaon. Now let's go to quantitative references. Previously, in a lesson that we have already discussed on the basic Cebuano questions, we have translated pila to imply how many. Uh, when you say pila ka buok, buok means piece, a piece of something. So pila ka buok means how many pieces. Or What's the quantity? Tagpila, again, this was also previously translated and covered. Tagpila, how much? So when you, you're asking for the price of something, a commodity, or if you're trying to find out how much an item costs, so you have to ask the question, 
tagpila. Now, if you want to be specific, like you really want to know how much each piece costs, then you can always say, tagpila ang buok. So, take note of the word buok, which refers to a single piece. Usara ka buok. Um, the word ra is used here, which implies only or just. So you can just say, usara ka buok, just one piece, or just a single piece. Usara ka buok. Usa ka panon. Um, I have enclosed in parentheses sa mga tao. Um, Panon is a group, mga tao, that's people. So when you say usaka panon sa mga tao, that means a surge of a crowd or simply a group of people or simply a crowd. Um, sometimes panon is also used for, let us say, a group of animals. So, usaka panon nga mga baka, a group of cows. Usaka panon nga mga langgam, a flock of birds. Um, just remember that when it says panon, it is a collective a grouping, a description of a, a group that is more than one. Um, how do you say usaka dusena? Um, usa is again one and um, dozen is simply translated to dusena. Um, usak kagatos ka kilo. 100 kilos. Um, the word here that I'm trying to point out is gatos. Gatos means 100. Sometimes you also hear libo. Libo is 1,000. So, if you say usaka libo ka kilo, that means 1,000 kilos. Now, let's express more of the quantity. Um, docena, that's dozen. Gatos, a hundred. Libo. A thousand. Tunga, half. Tibuok, whole. Tunga sa dosena, half a dozen, or half of a dozen. Tibuok nga pung pung. Pung pung is like a bundle or a bunch. And um, say you want an entire bunch, you can just say tibuok nga pung pung or you can say a whole bunch. Now, this one, uh, this is very common. You can, you can um, hear all the time. Um, uh, on the radio or in media outlets, um, people usually express the year if they want to translate it to the closest to the Cebuano translation. They translate the year in terms of its um, Spanish equivalent. So here it's uh, pretty obvious. Um, how do you say 1941? Mil 
which is a thousand, nueve, which is nine, cientos. Um, that's nueve cientos is nine hundred. Cuarenta, forty, y, that's and, uno. So mil nueve cientos cuarenta y uno is simply 1941. Marzo cinco, March 5th. Now, um, if you notice here, the spelling of cinco is not the usual um, Spanish equivalent, which is C-I-N-C-O. Either way, it can be expressed as cinco and spelled this way, or it can also be spelled the other way. What matters is um, the way it is said. So everyone understands that cinco is five. Now, just a quick um, difference between more or less. You can express more by saying daghan. And you can also express less by saying dutai or jutai or gamay. So when you say more reasons, reasons that's um, translated to mga rason. Rason is a reason, and since uh, we're using plural reasons, so that's mga rason. Daghan nga mga rason. Less results. So, less, that's jutai, and then again, results, mga resulta. Jutai nga mga resulta. Um, how do you do a comparison? Like, if you want to imply that something is bigger than the other, or another thing is smaller or lesser to another quantity. Now, the only thing that you need to remember is the use of the word mas. So, as soon as you hear the word mas, know that there is a comparison that is being made. So, if I say heavy, that translates to bugat. If I say heavier or more heavy, then you can just say mas bugat. If I say small, that's gamay. And then if I want to say smaller, then I can just say mas gamay. So this can also be used in, in many um, comparative adjectives. So if you say guapo, which means handsome, and you want to say more handsome, mas guapo, um, talented, adunay talento, more talented, mas adunay talento. So, I think for you to be able to designate a comparison, the one cue that you need to remember is the use of the word mas. Mas will always imply that a comparison is being done. So that covers our lesson and our topic about everything, um, numbers, quantity, 
time and um, numeric related uh, stuff. I hope um, you learned a lot today and um, if you have questions feel free to write it down on the comments section. I'll try my best and I'll take the time to answer the more important um, questions or comments. And um, please, if you like this page, if you find this useful at all, um, please subscribe to this channel. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to provide more lessons for everyone to enjoy and possibly help them in um, learning the English and Cebuano translation and um, also some of the words for the Cebuano and Visayan dialect. Daghang salamat. And uh, before I go, just a quick reminder to all of you who are looking for a Cebuano and or Visayan dialect uh, tutorial. Feel free to check out these books that are now available on Amazon. Um, they're also available in both uh, hard copies and in Kindle format. So I hope um, you take the time to get your own copies. And I'm going to see you in the next lesson. Again, I would like to say, um, Daghang Salamat.